A pendulum consists of a small object of mass m fastened to the end of an inextensible cord of length l. Initially, the pendulum is drawn aside through an angle of 60 degrees with the vertical and held by a horizontal string as shown in the diagram. The string is burned so that the pendulum is released to swing to and fro. Determine the tension in the cord before the string is burned and show which is an interesting term to see on your AP exam, if that's what you're taking, show that the cord strong enough to support the object before the string is burned is also strong enough to support the object as it passes through the bottom of its swing. Okay, so starting with the slightly easier part A, we're gonna determine the tension in the cord before the string is burned. Now to do that, we're gonna use our standard dynamics procedure, which for me starts with drawing a free body diagram and considering the sum of forces in an axis of choice. I center my free body diagram on the mass and let's talk about all the forces in play. We have a string pulling us to the right. You might call that force TS for tension in the string. And we have going up here on the diagonal TC, what we might call the tension in the cord. Now that's what we want. However, we're gonna have to separate things into the X and Y axes if we're gonna get anywhere. So let me go ahead and look at the Y axis here and think about what's going on there. If I drew things from the perspective of the Y axis only, I could talk about T, C, Y, as well as our regular force of gravity, mg. If I used a different color to talk about the x-axis forces, I would be using ts, because that's perfectly aligned in the x-axis, as well as tcx. Now, either of these axes I can use to write an equation, but let me see what happens if I consider, first, only the y-axis and the sum of all the forces in that axis. To write down the equation represented by the green uh, parts of the diagram, I might say that the sum of the forces in the y-axis are equal to TCY minus MG. The minus representing the fact that perhaps downward ought to be the negative sense and upward can be the positive sense. Now, this thing is being held in equilibrium, okay? Before the string is burned, obviously it's not moving, certainly not accelerating. So, when I talk about the net force, which is really ma by Newton's second law, I can skip straight to saying zero. Zero is equal to tcy minus mg, and algebraically that's equivalent to tcy is equal to mg. Now, TCY is not what I was asked for. I was asked for T, the whole tension in the cord along the diagonal. But because of the trigonometry of this situation, okay, if I consider a triangle, let's sketch it out here, if I make that triangle out to be like that, and I move this 60 over here because of alternate interior angles, something like that, then I would be able to say that the cosine of 60 being equal to adjacent over hypotenuse is TCY over the proper TC. And that's useful because I can cross multiply the TC over and find that TCY is equal to TC cosine of 60. Now that actually solves for TCY, the thing I have over here. I'm gonna make that substitution, but not before I actually say that the cosine of 60, uh, let's see, which one is that? That one is 1 half, I believe. So we actually have TC over 2, TC times 1 half, because that's equal to the cosine of 60 uh, for my substitution. So we go ahead and say that. We say that TC over 2, the proper TC that I want, that I've been asked for, is equal to mg. And finally, I can cross multiply over a 2 and find that the tension in the cord at this particular moment is the very elegant 2mg, twice the weight of the ball. Now for the part we've been waiting for. 
to show that the cord strong enough to support the object before the string is burned is also strong enough to support the object as it passes through the bottom of its swing, which I have tried to replicate here. What this means is that we are going to have to show mathematically that the tension here at this very moment is less than 2mg. If so, then we know that the, that the cord will be able to withstand it. Now, let's find out what the tension actually is and if we're right about this. As usual, we'll draw our free body diagram. We've already started with the tension we need to represent. And the other force I detect in play here will be my usual mg. That appears to be it. Nothing going on here in the x-axis. So, these two represent the net force. I will say in an equation that the net force on the ball at this point is equal to T minus mg. This maintains the fact that I initially declared the downward sense to be negative. The tension pulls us up, therefore it is positive. The, the gravity pulls us down, therefore it is negative. Newton's second law allows us to replace the net force with ma. But if you think about it, the type of acceleration we have here giving us our motion at the end of the day is the circular type, centripetal, because this is a pendulum with a radius of L. So when I say ma, I should say mac for centripetal acceleration. That's equal to T minus mg, but let me make one more substitution. The definition of centripetal acceleration. V squared over R. Right, so R being the length of my pendulum in this case, so I guess I should say V squared over L. And a a couple of things I know, mass, gravity, this length, or our r if you, if you so choose, but two things we don't know, the tension that we'd like to find and the velocity of the ball at this point. And it turns out that the easiest way to get that velocity is going to be by setting up another set of equations considering conservation of energy. So this is a pretty good problem, a really good sort of all-encompassing physics one kind of problem, at least the first couple of, uh, first couple of weeks of physics one for sure. So, where the real problem begins now, I need to find the velocity of the mass. I'm going to do so by considering the mechanical energy present at what I will call the initial situation and the final situation. For the sake of convenience, and because we're about to talk about potential energy, I am going to create a height equals zero line at the bottom of my pendulum's swing. Which means up here, we have a certain height to be determined. So, let's consider that this is a conservation of energy situation. We expect that energy be, will, will be conserved, and we can say delta E mechanical energy equals zero, which is to say EF final energy minus EI initial is equal to zero, which is to say where most students would skip to EI equals EF. Okay, I don't need to consider work done in this problem, although I could have, it would have been zero. So what kind of energy is present initially at the very instant we cut the string or burn the string? Well, there's no motion, but relative to where I have set height equals zero, I have some height. Therefore, it would make sense to talk about my initial potential energy as the summation of all the energies I have in the initial state. In the final state, I have reached a height of zero, so I would have no potential energy relative to where I've decided to start measuring things, but I certainly have some velocity that I've picked up as a result of falling. And so we can say KEF. We can use the definitions to replace potential energy and kinetic energy. I'll just go with MGH for representing the height here, and I'll go with one half 
mv squared, the very v that I want. In fact, the v squared that I want. Notice v squared appears there and appears there, so I won't be solving for v by taking the square root of both sides when I get to it. Now, one simplification I can make is that I don't, see, don't appear to need the mass because the mass appears in the same place on both sides of the equation. I have that gh is equal to v squared over 2. Finally, I can say by cross multiplying over the 2 that v squared is equal to 2gh. That would be nice if I could just simply put 2gh in for v squared, but not so, not today, because h, this height off my quote-unquote ground, is not something I technically know. So I have to somehow express it in terms of things that I do know. For instance, the length of this cord. And this is where it turns into a bit of a bit of a brain buster. Okay? We're going to take advantage of the trigonometry inherent in this diagram once more. Okay? Now, one thing is for sure. This whole distance I might call L. The string is no different in length when it's suspended than it is when it's mid-swing. I can take advantage once again of the trigonometry, just like I said, and start talking about the cosine, okay? There's this thing, that length. Let's call it x for now, and let's put it up against the h, which is actually in question. I can say that the cosine of 60, which is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, is x over l. Therefore, I may cross multiply and say that x that sort of upper half of the diagram is equal to L cosine of 60, and you'll recall that cosine of 60 was equal to 1 half, so I might say L over 2. How does that help me? Well, isn't it true that the height I've been talking about, the height over here, is nothing more than the whole length minus this part of the length? In other words, the length minus half of the length? which of course leaves half of the length. So I can substitute that. I can say that v squared is equal to 2g times l over 2. That's equal to v squared, which amazingly cancels out the 2, and it turns out that v squared is equal to none other than gl. Very significant result, and exclusively in terms of things that were defined, variables that were defined in the problem. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and substitute that for v squared. We have now a combination of all of these equations I've written. m gl over l equals t minus mg. Let's see if we can fit it in this spot I've tried to leave. I'm going to cancel out these l's. Amazingly, we have mg equals t minus mg. We add mg to both sides, and we have successfully solved for the tension. Look at that, 2mg. Amazing. No bigger, in fact, exactly the same as the tension that was originally present in the cord before the string was burned. Therefore, if we write down that thing I just said about the tensions being the same, along with having this algebra on our, on our page, if we're taking an AP exam, we have successfully shown that the cord will support the ball at the bottom of its swing.